All right. So we're going to be looking at um, October, November 2001, paper two practicals. Okay. So we jump right into it. And uh, before we jump in, in, um, into it, first of all, I hope that you've downloaded the source file. I think I've got mine here. So you have to go to um, the internet and then download the source files. Okay, so if you've not gotten that, just do that right now before you begin. And then the question, even if you don't have a question, you don't have any problem because I'm going to be alternating from here to, you know, the work. So it's easier, easier for you. The only thing you need is the source file. So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, for this number one and number two, I assume that you can do that by yourself. Uh, being able to create a, uh, open a file called uh, an X. Uh, one evidence rtf so it's inside the um, the source file so this is the evidence who is it um i think it's supposed to be somewhere in here yeah that's it right here so you can just walk i mean uh, open it and all that so i'm going to be looking at the microsoft word aspect of uh, this okay for this um video so for this, um, you know, um, email address, contact, and everything, I suppose you'd be able to do this also. So I'll be looking at this. I will jump right from, or we'll start right from number three. All right. So first of all, you are now going to edit a document about the development of a new port. Number three, using a suitable a stable software package load the, the file nx one port o two dot rtf so i go to my um folder so just in case i uh, have just in case your extension is not showing you can go to view uh go to view and then simply click on a uh, file name extension so that you'll be able to know whether you are on csv rtf or docs or something like that so so that you're extensions will be showing okay so in this case we are told to open this file so I will do that mm, yeah so while it's open let me just read the next one so um, set the page uh, size to a4 okay so as as it opens just to be quick of about that so I'll set the page size layout size and we'll take it to a4 so it was an a5 so i'll make it a4 the next question question four question five sorry set the page orientation to portrait so i'll go back there uh, make it portrait orientation portrait and then the next one is um question six set all margins to one centimeter all right, so I'll still at uh, layout. I'll go to margins, custom margins. Uh, set everything the top one, and then button one, one, then right one. All right, and then okay. The next thing is uh, the next question is um. Number seven, save the document with a new name in your work area. All right, so uh, normally when you start answering a question, you create a folder, basically create a folder, which I've done inside my uh, source file. I've created a folder here called Ike. So I'm going to be saving my work different from the original work here. Just in case you make a mistake, you can always go back to your original um document so what I'm gonna do as director from the question that I saved the document with a new name so they didn't specify the name that they're gonna use so any name it's okay basically if I should advise your name and then your candidate number something like that but I'm gonna just give it any name for the sake of this uh, exercise so I'm gonna go to file go to save as that's how to give it a new name then I'll browse my location. Um, yeah, I'm there. So I'm going to give it this name, Ike. I don't think there's a specification to change the uh, 
file this the file type but I'm going to change it anyway there's no specification for that so it might still be in RTF okay I will leave it in RTF because I wasn't told to change it to either docs or anything so I might leave it in that so I'll I'll give it maybe my name is Ike so I'll give it 001 something like this I think this will be much uh, better all right so I'll save it with that name uh, yeah I'll move on with the next question so please in the header your name uh, left aligned your candidate number center aligned and then center uh, number right aligned so uh, I'll just take an arbitrary so uh, in the head I suppose yes my memory has me right yes so I'll go to either I double click on top of the document to get to the header or I go to insert and then header any one of them can serve so I think let me just do the uh, latter uh, I'll go to inserts I'll go to header mm, look then uh, I'll take the appropriate um, type which is this one I click on that then I'll give this my name uh, let me say Ike sorry Ike. yeah it yeah so I go to the middle sorry I go to the middle give it the center candidate number let me assume that mine will be zero zero one and then I'll go to the right I'll give it a uh, center number let me assume ng zero zero one just something I'll be trying then I close I close the header so the next the next question is to um, place in the future today's date left aligned today's date left aligned and then automated file name right aligned automated file name right aligned so I'm gonna go to then um, the same thing I'll go to the so I'll go to insert again and then this time footer this time footer take the same type uh, I suppose sorry I'm coming let me just be sure that this thing applies very well okay so I either I go insert footer sorry footer take this type and then um, I think I'll, I'll have to get off all this, all of them. Okay, all of, and then um, left aligned is today's date and time. I think I will take this today, Saturday, July 2018. I'll okay that, and then I'll um, double click to the um, right, suppose right. That wanted the file name right aligned, so. Um, Okay. I'll just make sure my cursor is blinking here. Then I'll go to quick path. Quick path. Sorry, just a mistake. Quick path field. And then I'll go to a search for file name. Uh, file name. Now the question did not indicate for those who have an idea about how to do this it did not indicate for you to add the file path it just said file name so I'm gonna leave it at file name is the situation whereby it says I should add the file path then I will um, check this video button here this checkbox here just to, f to add the file path but it never indicated the file path so I'm gonna leave it like this and then okay so I there's your one RTF so that's the file name all right okay so I'll exit the footer so the next question goes so the next question is make sure that all the ali alignments match the page margins make sure that headers and footers are displayed on each page so if I go here all the headers and footers for each page all of them are well 
um displayed right my right uh maybe sure then uh my listing is not showing my name is not showing here so let me know why okay so i don't i can't remember adding my name or something i can't remember what happened so let me just be sure that my name shows i can't remember what i did to make it go off so um, i have to add that again okay. hope this has me right now mm. okay Leave it like that and then close that and then check again that issues in all the pages yes it does so i think i'm good if you have any question please drop it at the comment section below i would love to hear from you okay so the next question which is question nine is set a blank line at the start of the document and enter the title development at port prepared so mm, I go sorry so a blank line goes in here so I go up here and then put the development uh, let me show what I'm putting in here development at port prepared okay sorry. at port Pad. Let me just have it. Put. Put pit pad. Yeah. Make the title right aligned. So I'm gonna make it right aligned. So before I do that, I select it and then um, right aligned. What's the next thing? So make it set the the font size of the title to thirty six point. Okay. So I have it thirty six points. Mm, then the next thing is to uh, below so number twelve below the title add a subtitle report by and add your name so I'm going to go down here and then have report by and then my name my name is Ike and call me Ike E E for Amalefo so and that's that for it so the next question goes number 13 question set the title and the subtitle to a serif font now in this case my serif font i always like to take times new roman for serif font so i go down here go up there and then take times new roman as my serif font you can choose any other serif font but mm, i always want times new roman uh the next thing is um Number 14, set the font size of the subtitle to 18 points. So, what I'm going to do is I'll just select basically the subtitle and make it 18 points. Uh, the next question, which is question uh, 15, make, all, make only the subtitle italic and underlined. So, I will still work on it, make it italic underlined. Beautiful. So the next question also goes uh, number 17. After the subtitle, format the rest of the document as body text. As what body text into two equally equally spaced column with two centimeter gap. So I'm going to select everything here. So this will give me an opportunity of just looking at the document to see how they all look and everything is just so like some italic some all that. okay so uh, I select this and then I go to uh, layout go to column and then what I want more columns and then I take two and the number of columns two and then the spacing I want it to be perfectly one cm so I'll write one right there 
and then OK. So I have my spacing perfectly 1cm. And then the next question, which is question what 18, then set set the body text to a sans serif font. When we talk about sans serif, I always like to take Calibri as a sans serif. So I will take Calibri. But before I do that, um, I just noticed that most of most of the text, some are bold, some are italic, some are. So I want to take them to a uniform, uh, let's say font style. So um, and then uh, also snap it out of bold and italic. So what I do is I click this once, all of them are bold, then I click again, they switch back. That solves it. And then this, I click this one once, and then I click back again. So everything will be quite uniform. So by the time I go and change the font style to uh, Calibri, everything gives me uniform um, you know, styles, more or less. Okay. So uh, Calibri, yeah, Calibri body. I think I love that. Okay, so uh, number 19, set all the body text to single line spacing. So I'm going to set it to single line spacing. You can come here or you either click here to have yourself, uh, um, you know. So the line spacing, you take single here. And uh, okay, so everything will fall to single line. All right, um, yeah. So number 20, set the alignment of all the body text to be fully what justified, I think. So everything has to be justified, which is awesome. The next question number 21, set the font size of all body text to 12 points. And this is where everything will rhyme right now. So I have 12 points, everything 12 points. So everything will look very much good so make sure there is a blank line after each paragraph of the body text and that this line spacing and the and this line spacing is consistent now if you look at all the um all the um paragraphs every first paragraph all of them there's always a blank line before them so i, I just don't want to add any other line because they all look awesome you know there's always blank line for each paragraph so I think it's good the way it is so I think I'll continue all right so uh, number 23 in in the left in the left column before the first paragraph of the uh, document enter the, the subheading and important regional ports so I'll go here this is the first heading this is the first one so I'll put an Important regional. Hope I'm right. Then enter. So it gives me one line spacing, which is awesome. An important regional port. So let me look at it. An important regional port, which is what it is. Number 24. Identify the subheadings in the document and make them all italic sans serif and 14 points so the original sans serif which is italic i mean which is um calibri so but we're going to make all the document to be identify all the subheadings sorry the subheadings on the document to make them all italics and then 14 points make sure that there is one line spacing below each subheading we read on that so the only thing just need to make, make them right now is italics and 14 points so we identify them this is one of them so i make it 14 points uh, and then italics so this is the second one second one uh, italics and then 14 points i think i'm gonna have to use a format painter right now with my format painter i do this select that and then i have this do the same thing uh, this one seems to have. No, this is supposed to be Calibri, please. That's Calibri. Uh, yeah. So I wonder why it's not picking up. So uh, this one's supposed to be also Calibri. So 
I take that, put it right here. Also, this I have to get it also. Mm. Also, give it here. Take it, pick it up again. Storage development. Put it in here. Uh, let me pick up that one too. For my painter. Uh, any other one? Okay, yeah. paint this one too. So they all have the same properties, right? This one Times New Roman. That's one. It's not what I need. What I need is Calibri. You know the one in Times New Roman. I don't want Times New Roman. Okay, so everything is in Calibri right now. Calibri 14 points italics. So Calibri basically is um sans serif fonts. So all right. So um make sure that there is a blank line after each paragraph of the body text blah blah. Yeah, we got it. So um yeah, so that's 24. So, so the next question is 25. Find the table in NX1 um, export O2.RTF and insert it at the end of the document. So we go to, uh, um, so this is, the, this is the thing we're looking for. This is uh, the file we're looking for. We need the table in there. So I click on the table, then copy Control C. I copy that. Then I come to my table, I mean my uh, document. So I want it at last. Mm, the documents. The last of it. So I think I want it here. Let me just be sure that this is the last. Okay. Um, come. Sorry. I need to be sure that this one is the last of it all. Yeah, so this is the last. So I, I, the next line. Next line, yeah. So I'm gonna have to paste it right here, just like this. This is the way I want it. This place I want it. And it aligns with just just have to adjust a little bit just to align with the column. A little bit along with the column the way I want it. So I'm gonna have to move it a little bit to the side just to be able to be sure that. Mm, messes, messes up. So I think I'm gonna have to leave it like this. By the time I, I format that, it's gonna align with the, with the column. Yes. So the next question. Uh, make sure that the table fits within the column. Yes, the font should match the body text of the document. So what I'm gonna do for it to match because when you sorry, this one is the table that we opened before. So um, when you um. When you click this for the information here, you find out that it's Times New Roman and it is 12 points. So, but we want it to be sans serif. It's um, actually a serif font that is inside the table. So, I'll select everything and make it Calibri. Just Calibri on there just to match the body text also. Um, yeah, that's it. The next thing is to make the cells in the top row of the table across the five columns. Format only this row to be center aligned and underlined. So uh, I'll select just this row, right click, merge cell, center align, and then underline. Okay. Mm, do I have to adjust it to I don't need to do this but I feel like doing this just for it to be at the middle it doesn't kill to just to make it f uh, look somewhat nice All right so um what's the next thing here yeah 
The next question 28 uh, set all borders of the table to be visible when printed. The borders are already um, visible. Set only the outside border of the table to be a thick bold. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, for this I'll select everything. I'll go home. I'll go to outside border. I want to set the outside border. No. Outside border. Facts. Uh, I have to go to border and shading. And then um, I want the box. Make the box just uh, three points. And I think that's what I need. Uh, I still want. Um, I still want. Sorry, the grid line to show. Yeah, the grid line should show. And I think that's about that. Yes. So. It looks good. This is exactly what they want us to do. So the the border around it will be three points, and then the green line shows. That's it. Uh, the next question number thirty: Find an image of a harbor port or boat. Resize the image to a height of three cm and maintain the aspect ratio. So I'm going to do this inside the document. So um, if you don't have an image of 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 these okay you can just go to the internet and just get yourself one okay I got I've got uh, an image already so I don't have to waste time so what I'm, I'm gonna do right now is just simply go in here copy the image and then go to my document and paste it right here so where is the situation where is this situated I didn't finish the, this question besides making so place this image on the first page below the subheading that is an important regional, excuse me, regional port aligned with the top of the first paragraph. Okay, aligned to the left margin, just the way it looks here. So I think it's quite self-explanatory. So I'll go up there. So this is actually what they want me to put the image. So I will click there. Either I right-click and paste, or I do control. Um, control V, anyone you want. So what I'm going to do, the next thing I'm going to do is to uh, format this image because it's quite um, huge. So uh, I have to format it to about uh, three cm. The I think so the height, yes, the height should be three cm. Uh, from the question, the height should be three cm. Yeah. So maintain aspect ratio. So I have to maintain the aspect ratio. So it's 3 cm, 3 cm, and that's it. Enter. And then uh, the next thing is to wrap the text. Right now, wrap the text. I think I have to not tights. Uh, let me just through. No. Uh, okay. Let me just take tights. Yeah, tights might be best for this for this situation. So I think, and then aligns with the text right here. So I think this this is the best um you know setting for this and uh, yeah so make sure the text wraps ar wraps around the image which we've done and it may look like this yeah so we are good with this spell check and uh, proofread the document place page breaks if necessary so you don't have to do all this these are things you do if necessary depending on how you format your your page so if necessary so to ensure that tables do not overlap and there are no widows and orphans and no blank pages so let me just um so in case you want to do some spell check for this uh, document i don't think any spell check is necessary i think the only spell check here is that this place this deport uh the port is uh, there are two double line here so i just have to just um, uh make it only one line by just removing one this one is a little shady this one is a little the blackness of this this place is a little different but i'm not going to touch it because i don't think it was specifically um you know um the instruction wasn't specific for us to do this you know probably make this a little bit um you know so i'm gonna have to leave it like this okay i think this is the best i can do for this Mm, so in case you want to do some spell check you can go to review from review you can get yourself spell spell check and then do the, do all the necessary spell check if need be but in this case i don't think spell check is needed all right and then uh everything there's no 
so if you look at your work you just have to look at it very very well just to be sure that it's um well um you know uh, spaced and everything so i think everything is good and uh, and that's it so you can simply uh go ahead to print your work by going to file and going to print and then uh, you can see that your work is pretty good and so you can can now print it and then that's about that okay so um i'll see you in the next video bye